And you here on the platform, if you want additional prayer, if you need to get Bible study, then we have Bible counselors who are on board right now, waiting in the prayer room for those requests. And you feel free at any point in time, raise your hand. If you want more prayers, more prayer, more power. So the number to call for that, 646, and I'll repeat it, 646 400 5720. At this time, we will go right in to our opening song, hymn number 27. And this is going to be led out by Brother Hutchinson. Rejoice ye pure in heart. Rejoice, give thanks, and sing. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Let's see. Is he on? There we go. Brother Hutchinson, can he unmute himself? All right. So I, I know technology, it always presents a challenge. And this is no different. Let's see who's in the chat, where you're from. As soon as you're able to unmute, brother, go right ahead and unmute. I want to say happy Sabbath to Joni, who is in Ocala, Florida. Is he able to? Yes, he's unmuted now. Okay. Awesome. Rejoice, ye pure in heart. Rejoice, give thanks and say your festival banner wave on high, the cross of Christ your King. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and say. With voices full and strong, as ocean surging press, send forth the sturdy hymns of all the psalm of ancient days. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and the same. With all the angels choir, with all the saints on earth, pour out the strain of joy and bliss through rapture, noblest mirth. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. Yes, on through life's long past, still chanting as ye go, from youth to age, by night and day, in gladness and in woe. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. Praise him who raised on high, the Lord who we adore, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, one God forevermore. Rejoice, 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 give thanks, and sing. Amen. Amen. And we're going to rejoice. Even when the technology doesn't work, we're going to keep praising God because Satan cannot stop this. You hear me? So at this time, we are going to bring to you our health nugget. And because we have um, Omicron uh, on the rise, 
right? We want to make sure that you stay healthy. So at this time, you are going to receive our flu bomb and we ask that you get pen and paper because that is going to help you during this time. The novel coronavirus, known as COVID-19, has caused a worldwide pandemic that requires the wearing of masks and frequent hand washing in order to prevent infection. Infection occurs when we are exposed to air and surfaces tainted with the coronavirus that can get into our air and nasal passages and then enters into our cells and multiply, damaging cells and tissues. Symptoms of the coronavirus may be experienced, such as having a fever or chills, a cough, shortness of breath, fatigue, body aches, sore throat, or headaches. But it is when the virus reaches the lungs that it especially does its damage to the alveoli creating scar tissue and filling them with fluids, causing a pneumonia that can result in hospitalization, intubation, and even death. But what about vaccines? Are they the answer against the coronavirus? And what about these new mRNA vaccines? Are they safe in the long term? And do they truly provide immunity against infection of the coronavirus? or their severe complications and symptoms? Truthfully, we do not know. Due to the virulent nature of the virus and its tendency to mutate, we really don't fully know the effectiveness of these vaccines and their long-term effects. But God has a plan, and His health plan reforms how we think about and combat disease using medicinal plants, foods, and techniques that support the immune system. The Lord has provided antidotes for disease in simple plants, and these can be used by faith with no denial of faith, for by using the blessings provided by God for our benefit, we are cooperating with Him. The super flu balm is one of the natural remedies that God has given us to boost our immune system and to fight COVID-19. This is a natural remedy with ingredients that can be found just about anywhere in the world today. The ingredients are also quite inexpensive and if you have a garden, you may be growing many of these items in your backyard. The super flu bomb is made with the following ingredients. You may combine any or all of them. Use what you have in your hand. Turmeric, six inches or three tablespoons of powdered turmeric. Ginger, six inches or three tablespoons of powdered ginger. Garlic, 10 cloves. Onions, two medium size. Lemon, squeeze six or 12 tablespoons of lemon juice. Cayenne pepper, one teaspoon or five open capsules. Honey, five tablespoons. However, if you are a diabetic, do not, do not add honey to your super flu bomb. Water, two hot cups. Blend all the ingredients together in your blender. Next, let it stand for 40 minutes. If you have a powerful blender, the pulp should be palatable. If you have someone who has not eaten for an extended period of time, you can also make a super flu bomb soup. Simply boil the blended turmeric, ginger, garlic, onions, water, and add salt to taste. Let it cool for 40 minutes. Then add the lemon juice and cayenne pepper, and also add 
slices of potato and let it boil again. Remember to keep the superflu bomb refrigerated and allow it to cool before drinking. Take three to four tablespoons every 15 minutes while symptoms continue. Pause for two hours before and two hours after lunch. Continue to use the superflu bomb, one tablespoon, two to three times daily for up to two weeks after the symptoms have ceased. If you are daily exposed due to your work, continue with use of superflu balm, one tablespoon, two to three times daily. Once there are others in the home, follow the use of the superflu balm for one to two weeks as if they have contracted the virus. The superflu balm combination can be used for one who has high blood pressure or normal blood pressure. Don't wait, don't hesitate. Prepare your super flu bomb today. Amen, amen. We are getting ready to go into our prayer session at this time. And so I ask that you go ahead, put your prayer request in the chat as we play the song, Come Holy Spirit, I Need Thee. And Sister Didi is going to bring your prayer requests to the throne room at this time. As we focus on heaven at this time, Sister Didi, if we can unmute her so that she can bring the prayer request to the footstool of God. Amen. All right, family, um, let us bow our heads for prayer. 
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for this beautiful Sabbath day, dear God, that you have blessed us with to come together as family and to commune together, dear God. Please continue um, to be with me as I pray. Help, um, please receive my prayer today, dear God, on behalf of your children here this morning. I am lowly and undeserving. Please remove any sin from within me. I am thankful for your grace and your mercy, dear God, as we humbly come before you in prayer. There are those in need of your sympathy, dear God, of your tender and loving character, as we know you are our only intercessor. Please be with our family and friends, dear God, that are suffering, those that are without jobs, dear God, those that have lost their jobs due to their freedom of choice, dear God, those that um, are have lost loved ones due to this, this um, pandemic, dear God. Please be with them and give them the strength that they need, dear God. There are those that are still grieving through the process of various losses they've had in their lives, dear God, whether that's a loved one or whether that's even just a relationship, dear God. Just continue to strengthen them and give them hope in your grace and your mercy. Bring peace, dear God, to all of us. And continue to be with our families and friends that do not know you for themselves, dear God, and have not found you. And just continue to help them, help your Holy Spirit to continue to press upon their hearts and their souls as we continue to pray for them daily, dear God. Help us to intercede, not just for ourselves each and every day, but for our loved ones, those that that are in need of you, those that are discouraged, those that just are given up, dear God. Help them to realize that there is hope beyond this world and help us all to continue to be faithful, dear God, in the things that we do. Um, continue to, to be with our, our youth, dear God, in a special way. Help them. The devil is after our children, dear God, and they are distracted, dear God. They are seeing everything that is more shinier than what you have promised us, dear God, because that is the, the duty of our adversary to make everything appealing until we get to death's door, dear God, and then he abandoned all of us. So continue to give us the strength that we need, the hope and the encouragement, dear God, that we need. Be with our, um, the Jackson family, dear God, in a special way, they have asked for a prayer request. Um, dear God, you know the needs that they have. Continue to just give them the strength and the hope that they need to walk as your children and to draw closer to you. And be with also Sister Karen as she is also doing surgery this upcoming week to remove a tumor, dear God. Help it not to be cancerous. Uh, help it to, you know, help her body to heal and just continue to give her the strength and the, and the comfort that she needs as she enters through that surgery door, dear God. Be with the doctors that will be touching her and help it to be your hands, dear God, and not their hands. Help her to continue to cling to you and to remove any sin from her heart, dear God, and for her to repent and for all of us, dear God, to continue to daily repent and be with brother, uh, I believe it's Hutchison. He is also battling cancer, dear God. Continue to heal his body as we all continue to pray for him, dear God, as our brother. Um, continue to help him to realize that your strength is sufficient, dear God. And just help us all, dear God, as we continue to draw closer to you. Help us to just humble ourselves and help us, dear God, to know that you uh, we'll remove any dark spirits that we may have within us, dear God. And anything that is preventing the light from shining from within us, dear God. Remove any bitterness and hurts that any of us are walking around with, dear God. Because your Holy Spirit is unable to dwell within us if we are holding on to so many hurts and pains. Help us not to continue to look back, but to look to the future, dear God. And to realize that anything that has happened to us, it is for our good, dear God. 
Your scripture tells us that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, dear God. And you have held us and you have kept us and you will not give us anything that we cannot bear, dear God. So it's obvious that if there's a challenge that's in our lives today, dear God, it is a strength that you have given us that we're just unable to see at this time, but you will continue to, to hold us up as you did your faithful servant, Job, dear God. Continue to just guide our hearts and our minds and for all of us just to be able to reunite in your kingdom on that once and glorious day, dear God, in your resurrection. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I, I want to let you know, even though you may not have heard your name call, we know Sister Deborah Hill, uh, Sister Jiderman, Sister Dissielin, uh, Moto G. Stylus, Sister Leandra, Sister Jennifer, as the prayer requests keep coming in, that our Heavenly Father sees and He knows. And so we encourage you to keep faith that God is already moving to answer your prayer request. At this time, I want to turn our attention to the ways that you can support this ministry. And it is so important. It is not just a financial uh, request, but also through your prayer, most importantly, through your prayer, then through your talents. So on the screen, you have the various ways that you can give to this ministry. If you have your tithe, you want to submit it right here on this platform, we will get it to the designated spaces that it needs to go to. So we want to thank you. And at this time, I want to call Pastor Daly, who is going to continue expressing how you can give and support this ministry. Following Pastor Daly, we will have our scripture reading by Sister Rolene. Okay, thank you very much, Sister Merlene. And I just wanna say happy Sabbath to everyone. Uh, as uh, the pastor of this ministry, it's great to have you. We have a number of dedicated people who, um, who make this ministry uh, a success. And uh, we just want to continue to pray for our tech team, all our hosts, all our participants, but we're all here to praise God and uh, to serve you in whatever way possible. If you're here this morning, uh, Brother Courtney has a powerful um, program at seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, 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 it's a great, great service. Health, it just complete health. And there were many of you on this morning, always tell people about that. You went to our, our health Bible class, which we used to call Sabbath school. And now we're in our um, divine service. Now, another um, service that is rendered here is the Victory Wellness Center, which is in Cam, uh, which is Hyde Park, New York. And I'm just going to um, ask the tech team to show you that video right now. Now, we can do everything online, but if you have any long-term needs, this is where you need to go. Are you looking for a beautiful place to relax, to rest, and detox? A place where you will find natural ways of preventing, managing, and reversing lifestyle diseases, such as diabetes, hypertension, obesity, and cancer? If you are, then this healing center is for you. Located in Hyde Park, just three minutes away from Camp Victory Lake, the Victory Wellness Center awaits. For more information, visit us on Facebook at Victory Wellness or call us at 845-444-444. 9120. You can email us at info at or find us on Facebook at Victory Wellness Center, Inc. Or visit our website to schedule an appointment at victorywellness.org. Remember, our health is our greatest wealth. Amen. 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 So remember now, Contact us at 845-444-9120 um, for an assessment 
and our directors up there will minister to you. Health is our greatest wealth. We also have an advanced uh, natural remedies manual uh, for that was created by our partners, Eden Lifestyle. And uh, for those of you who make a contribution to the Wellness Center of $60 or above, we're going to give you this. We're not selling it to you. We're just giving you as a thank you gift. Uh, it has all sort of natural remedies, cleanse, and you name it in it. So we're going to ask you to call that same number, right? 845-444-9120. And this will be mailed to you when you make your contribution. They will tell you how to make your contribution to Zelle, WhatsApp, Vimo, or whatever. But we want you to keep on praying for a wellness center. Soon and very soon, those of us who are Adventists will not be able to go to the hospitals unless you have the mark of the beast. So that's why we need to have a lot of these centers going right now. So we want you to support it. Uh, if you want to go up there and volunteer as a medical missionary, please call up the number. We need some more volunteers. It's a very, very important ministry that is run by, uh, by, by the health ministry department of this conference, and we're just supporting them. We also told you about these lessons, my health and my creator. It combines a science and the Bible together in eight beautiful pamphlets. And if you're a guest on this platform, uh, it is free to you. Yes, it is free to you. If you're one of our regulars, we're gonna ask you to um, make sure that your family and your friends get a set of these. It can be digital. It can be uh, manual as you see it here. So recommend them to somebody. Most people wait until they are sick <laughs> before they seek help. No, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. So please see this. For those of you who are here also and uh, you need extra prayer, call the same number, 646-400-5720. Um, and on the third Wednesday night of every month, we have a virtual anointing service. Um, the Corrector Building Fraternity Prayer Line and us join together. It's a powerful thing. So it will be the 15th of this month. And we're going to ask you to bring your anointing oil. It will consecrate it. And you'll be able to use it and join in the blessings. And that same night, the 15th of um, this month, we'll have our source or our associate General Conference um, Health Ministry Director, Dr. Um, Zena Charles Martel, who will be a guest presenter. So we want you to put that down. It's going to be a special night, anointing. We're going to have our um, Associate General Conference Health Ministry Director to be here. And for those of you who don't know what that is, those of you who are guests, it's the world body that, can, um, uh, that governs the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Okay? It's great. And we're going to have a great, great, great time. Uh, it was mentioned already that we can have a, our second, um, our second uh, health evangelistic outreach from January uh, 14th to February 5th. We're going to combine health and the gospel together like how we did this year, early this year by Dr. Monet St. Gist from Eden Lifestyle. We want you to begin to pray for it, to plan for it to write down the names of people you'd like to come and receive that total healing. It's gonna be great. And my final thing is about uh, the coronavirus and its variants. This week has been an uncertain and an easy week for many of us in this country and in the world with the um, advent of the new um, Omicron um, variant. It's too early. Uh, for people to know exactly what to do. But until then, until we know more about it, we want to encourage you to do these few things, folks. Whether you're vaccinated or unvaccinated, we want you to remember to wear a mask. Uh, vaccination doesn't prevent you from transmitting the disease or getting the disease. But I know everybody knows that. Um, it's just, it's to help you to prevent you um, or to lessen the chances of getting um, hospitalization, serious infection, and death. So I want you don't be tricked. A lot of people believe that because you're vaccinated, they're all right. So we want to remember now, keep on wearing your mask, 
from Infamil Nation. Keep your hand, wash your hands regularly and practice social distance. If you can avoid large crowds, if you realize that in New York, one of the first discovery of the Omicron, Omicron variant was, a, was, was among somebody who went to that big thing that they had at J Jacob Javits Convention Center. This is also the holiday season and you're gonna be mixing with your family from all over the country. We want you to also be careful. Have your thermometer there uh, to take your temperature and practice social distance as much as you can because the Corona virus and its variants, beloved, they are no respect of persons. No respect of persons. Keep that in mind, okay? We also want you to supercharge your immune system with our nature's penicillin or the, um, or the super flu bomb that was presented this morning. Now, we have a lot of testimonies. We have a lot of natural remedies on my website www. Somebody put in there for us dailyhealth.com www.dailyhealth.com forward slash resources. I mean, when you go there, you will see um, various um, stories and testimonies that will help to build your faith. So, uh, next, uh, we would also want you to practice even more carefully now the eight laws of health because. Uh, they are the blood upon the doorpost, just like when the destroying angels and the plagues were falling through Egypt. Remember, God told him to put the blood upon the doorpost. This is the blood upon the doorpost. The God will work through it. And if God, and if it's so happy, you do all you can and you come down with it, God will never leave you nor forsake you. Anyhow, you have any symptoms, you have to hit it very, very hard, especially with the oregano oil that is found in the super flu bomb. Don't, don't try to wait out what it is. Try to hit it hard and strong. Uh, we have worked with over 400 people, Merlin, you know, uh, Western New York worked with over 100 people who were COVID-19 positive using the super flu bomb. And all my leaders told me that they didn't lose anybody. Because you see, beloved, God used simple things to confound the mighty. That's what God does. God used um, uh, 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 a man that was blind from birth. Remember him? Uh, had a, that congenital disease. God used clay and water uh, with his obedience and the power of God to turn him around. That's not scientific, people would think. But then that's what God says. When we do what God says and follow him, leave the result to him, all right? And above everything else, we want you to pray. The Bible says in Luke 18, 1, men are always to pray and not to panic. Pray and not to lose heart. The whole world is in a panic right now. I want you to remember that God has his angels. Uh, the, I call him his CEO, his covenant enforcing angels. Well, the president has his CIA agents, but we also have invisible agents that can protect us from this invisible enemy. Uh, we're going to do that in faith and trust God to do the rest. So I want to pray with you before I turn this back over to the next person. Father in heaven, I want to pray for our um, medical and political leaders. I know there we are all, they have to make serious decisions uh, in guiding us uh, during this pandemic. I pray, Lord, that you'll give them wisdom. And I pray that they will be honest. Uh, they will love the people. And they will not just be looking for the big farmer to make money off us. But they will be honest with us. And help us to do our due diligence also. So guide them and strengthen them. And those of us who are panicked right now, Lord, help us to know uh, that we can put our faith in you. We can put our faith in you. When the plagues were falling on Egypt, your people in Goshen were not panicking because they had the blood over the doorposts and your angels protect them. So I ask for supernatural power right now, Lord. Supernatural power. We want us to believe. Uh, so uh, supernatural power to be released in our lives. And because we know things are going to get worse before it gets better. 
the end is near. And I pray for those who are currently suffering from the COVID-19 virus and its variants. Please, Lord, don't leave them alone. Uh, we send your word right now and heal them and deliver them from their destruction. We want to thank you for those who have recovered. And we are praying now for those who, 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 who may be very scared. I pray that you'll bring peace. You said he whose mind is stayed upon you, you will keep them in perfect peace. So help us not to put our minds upon the problem, but upon the power of God. And when that happens, uh, we know that we'll have peace in the midst of our storm. And we're happy to have um, uh, Sister Baker, my good friend, and your preacher and your sermon, who's going to bring the word in a little while. I am thankful that you have given her a special word for us, and we'll receive it by faith. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen, amen, amen. And folks, at 3.30, we're going to have a special feature. I forgot, sorry to come back. A special, special feature at 3.30. Uh, God bless you, Merlin. It's back to you. Awesome. So we're going to continue now with our scripture reading. And this is being brought to us by Sister Rolene Antoine. Sister Rolene. The word of God is taken from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verses 24 through 27. Ezekiel, chapter 36, verses 24 through 27. I will read for your hearing. For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. Here endeth the reading of God's holy word. May it add a rich blessing of hope, faith, and joy to every hearer and doer of God's word. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Sister Roline. You know, I have the privilege of introducing our speaker to you today. And she is none other than Sister Eunice Senor Baker. Sister Eunice is a native of Jamaica, West Indies, and is the sixth of nine children. She graduated from Northern Caribbean University, formerly West Indies College, with a diploma in business. In 1980, she migrated to Costa Rica, Central America with her late husband, Pastor Joel Milena. After his sudden death in 1982, she again looked away from her misfortune and with her infant son, Joel Milena Jr., she again aimed for the stars. She received her bachelor's degree in business administration from the Central American Adventist University in Costa Rica. In 2007, she completed her master's in health administration at Hofstra University in Long Island, New York. She received numerous awards and certificates for outstanding service in the Seventh-day Adventist organization, including an official resolution from the city of Boston, Massachusetts, and a special congressional recognition from member of Congress of the United States. Sister Eunice is a very committed worker and has worked in countries such as Costa Rica, Honduras, Jamaica, and the United States. She possesses great organizational skills and has organized various conference-wide events for the Northeastern Conference. Sister Eunice's inspiration are her husband, Pastor Trevor H.C. Baker, who was the former president of the Northeastern Conference, 
who now pastors the South Ozone Estate Church in Queens, New York, her son, Joel Milliner Jr., who is a graduate of Oakwood College and Hofstra University in Long Island, and her granddaughter, Jadalyn. She is multi-talented and uses her gifts as a speaker, singer, and a professional flute player to inspire people to aim higher, to inspire them despite of their circumstances. Before Sister Eunice Baker comes to us, we will be blessed with a musical item, our meditation song, The Potter Wants to Put You Back. Actually, that should be, give me one second, let me get this straight. Our meditation song should be The Potter Wants to Put You Back Together Again. So at this time, our tech team Oh, okay. In case you have fallen by the wayside of life, dreams and visions shattered, you're all broken inside. You don't have to stay in the shape that you're in. The pot wants to put you back together again. Oh, the pot wants to put you back together again. In case your situation has been turned upside down and all that you've accomplished is now on the ground you don't have to stay in the shape that you're in the potter wants to put you back together again oh the potter wants to put you back together again you who are broken stop by the potter's house you who need mending stop together again oh the potter wants to put you back together again you who are broken stop by the potter's house you You can go ahead. You can go ahead with it. We want to. 
At this time, Sister Eunice will break the bread. Sister Eunice, are you able to unmute? Can you unmute her please, tech team? As she brings the word of God to us. Thank you very much, Sister Merlin. Thank you for that kind word of introduction. And I'm grateful to the young people for those messages and song today. I am truly blessed because it's a beautiful Sabbath day. And I give God a privilege and the thanks for the privilege he has given me to see such another beautiful Sabbath day. And I trust that everyone is experiencing a beautiful day like I am. Now, it is indeed a privilege for me to be asked to speak to this special group, the Healing of the Nations Ministry. I believe this ministry is God ordained. I believe that God has called you at such a time as this, a time when our nation needs healing, not just from the pandemic, but if we Christians are going to help turn our nation to God, we must fall on our knees and our faces before God and pray. The Bible tells us in 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. 
God has called you at such a time as this to so that to pray so that he would turn the hearts of those in our nation toward repentance, prayer, and faith in Jesus. I would like to congratulate Pastor Leroy Daly for the great work he has done in the health ministry department of our conference. Of course, with his lovely wife, Charlene, by his side, together they did or are doing a fantastic job to develop the health ministries department. Congratulations, Pastor Daly and Sister Daly. And as you move on in your pastoral ministry, may the blessings of the Lord continue to be upon you. Thanks again, Pastor Daly, for this opportunity to speak today. With me, I have um, my lovely lady, Sister Monica Sampson, and also my dear husband, Pastor Trevor Baker, with me. And I'm glad that they have joined me today. Amen. Amen. Um, let us focus today on our scripture reading that I have chosen, which is Luke 17, verses 11 to 19. Luke 7, verses 11 to 19. And I'll read in your hearing. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him 10 men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified, glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, were there not 10 cleansed, but where are the nine? This morning, the topic of my sermon is the diagnosis, a heart condition. Let us pray. Dear God, here we come together again on this your holy Sabbath day to worship thee. We we'll wait now to hear a word from you. So now we open our hearts to receive you. In the name of Jesus, amen. People often ask, if Jesus really exists, why do we suffer so much in life? When a person understands what sin has done to mankind, he will understand why a sovereign salvation is a sinner's only hope. We have been infected to the center of our being with sin, and we cannot cure ourselves. Anyone who believes there is some goodness in them that might merit the favor of God, he or she does not understand his own condition as a sinner. We must recognize that we are dead in sin, separated from God and without hope unless God intervenes in our lives. When God causes you to see the extent of your sin and inability, you will, with Paul, declare that in me there is no good. This awareness is essential to our salvation. That is why Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came into the world to save sinners. And not only did Jesus come to save sinners, but I love to read the stories of Jesus, how he healed pain-wrecked bodies and comforted their hearts. Jesus knew that they had a more serious problem than the physical condition. As a matter of fact, he knew that their physical maladies were as a result of the condition of their heart, the problem of sin. 
So more important to him was the healing of his sin sick heart. Notice that when he healed the man at the pool of Bethesda, he said, sin no more, lest a worse sin come upon thee. When he healed the man with palsy, he said to the man, thy sins are forgiven. I can never read enough of how crippled soul threw their crutches away and left the presence of Jesus, skipping, running, and praising God. I can never read enough of how he opened the blinded eyes with the touch of his finger. I can never read enough how he healed without cost. But my attention is drawn to the healing of those 10 lepers as recorded in the gospel that I just read for you. It is a familiar story to most of us. And in this story, Jesus is traveling to Jerusalem and determined to pass through the provinces of Samaria and Galilee. These two provinces are considered places of rejection. These are places uh, uh, where mixed multitudes of people live. People who were of mixed blood, such as Jews mixed with Gentile blood, etc. And don't forget that this was the boyhood home of Jesus. All of his disciples were from Galilee, except one of them. In Galilee, Jesus performed 32 of his 35 miracles. 19 of his 32 parables were spoken in the backdrop of Galilee. It ultimately became the headquarter for his ministry. Now he's passing through these two places of rejects. And while there, he went to a village that was unnamed. The Bible tells us he went through a particular village. And there he came across these 10 lepers. They had a disease called leprosy, a, a disease that was contagious and from which there was no cure. They were not allowed to be around other people, so they had to separate themselves from the rest of the general population. These lepers had two deadly problems. One was a matter of the heart, which is sin, and the other was a physical problem, which is sickness but something special happened to them that day. The Bible tells us in verse 12 of, of Luke 17, as he entered into a certain village, there met him 10 men that were lepers, which, which stood afar off. Yes, social distancing. I believe that Jesus deliberately came to where they were because he knew that they could not get to him. I am so glad that Jesus is able to connect with people who are afar off in the circumstances of life, afar off because you are going through a crisis that only God can handle and you feel lonely and dejected and away from the normal course of life because maybe because of COVID-19 and you have to stay afar off, but just like these lepers, help is on the way. So today hope springs up in their hearts. They heard that the man called Jesus is passing by. They heard that he is the great physician the balm in Gilead, the life giver who is able to fix their problem, the problem of disease. The Bible tells us in verse 13 that these men lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. Sometimes there are moments in our lives when we can't get too cute. We just have to open up our mouth and cry out to God. If the pain gets hard enough, 
and the drama gets hard enough, if the situation gets bad enough, we will cry out and say, Jesus, I need you. Father, we need you. He is the one that can transform your life. And it doesn't matter where you are and what you are going through. These 10 lepers lifted up their voices and they cried out and said, Jesus. But they didn't stop there. They said, Jesus, master, indicating that they were willing to do whatever he told them to do willing to give God total control of their lives. They cried out to him for mercy, for he is the only one who can give mercy and sympathy. And the sympathy of Jesus was instant and redemptive. Oftentimes, we cry out to Jesus because we have a physical need. But too many deny that we have a spiritual need, a heart condition. And yes, we, we will receive God's favor, but we, but we can miss the important thing in life that is salvation for the soul. Verse 14 says, and when he saw them, when Jesus saw them. Now, this is enough to make me shout because when we are rejected and is cast out, when we are in a situation that nobody can help us, us, it's good to know that Jesus sees us. So today, if you feel lonely and rejected, I am here to tell you that if you cry out to Jesus, he will see you. It doesn't matter what the doctor says. He will see you. It doesn't matter how hopeless the situation is. If Jesus sees you, everything is going to be all right. In Isaiah 59 verse 1, it tells us, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor is ear heavy that it cannot hear. But in verse 14, it says, Jesus responded to them and gave them a simple instruction. Go show yourself to the priest. Now, the significance of going to the priest is that in order for a leprous person or a person with any communicable disease to be declared able to go back into the culture and society, they had to be healed and that healing had to be validated by the priest in order for them to be welcomed back into the society. But the interesting thing is that you could not come to the priest unless you were healed. But Jesus gave them this simple, instruct, simple instruction that defied the common logic. They weren't supposed to go to the priest while they were in a leprous situation. They weren't supposed to go until they got healed. But Jesus knew that if they obeyed what he said, by the time they got to the priest, they will be all right. So I stop by here to tell you that you might not be healed right now, but just obey God, follow his word, follow his command and head in the right direction. And by the time you get to where you're going, by the time you get to where you're supposed to be, it will be all right. So go ahead and do what he tells you to do. You must not tell yourself that you're going to wait until the problem is over to start walking in faith. You cannot put conditions on the Holy God. You cannot say, Lord, as soon as there's enough money, I will follow your instructions. You cannot pray, Lord, if you'll just solve this issue I'm facing, I'll start going to church. You must take God at his word and trust him enough to believe what he says. What I like about this story is that the lepers did not even stop to argue or remind Jesus that, what, that the law says 
that they had to be clean before they can go into the priest. They just obeyed and in faith, they started on their way to the priest. And the Bible says, and it was, and so it was, as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned around and with a heart full of gratitude, went back to Jesus. He was full of joy, amazement, and wonder. And as he went, he was thinking about the opportunity of being with his family who he hadn't seen for a long time as a result of his social distancing. He understood the real implication of what had just happened. He had been in the presence of God and he wanted more than the physical healing. So he went back embracing the full potential of getting from God what he knew he really needed. His heart was longing for a relationship with the divine healer. He wanted to give himself to the divine healer. He wanted to fall on his face beneath that divine healer as a recognized sinner and worship and adore him as well as praise him and thank him. He wanted something more than just the physical healing. He came to recognize that God was not only a divine healer, but a savior. He was not content with just the physical healing. He came back and glorified God with a loud voice. He knew where the power had come from. He knew who had healed him and he knew Jesus was more than just a mere man. That's why he fell at his feet and worshiped him. He could not restrain his praise. He could not restrain his thanks. He went back to the true temple of God to worship. He, re he returned to seek what his soul desired and needed, salvation. How do I know that? Because that's, what, that's exactly what Jesus gave to him. Now, the Bible says this man was a stranger, meaning this man was not a churchgoer. He wasn't a Jew. The other nine were Jews, but this man was a Samaritan. He didn't know the 28 fundamental beliefs of the church. He didn't know the eight laws of health. He didn't know the 2300 days prophecy. He didn't know the 10 commandments. He didn't worship on the Sabbath day, but he returned with an attitude of gratitude and worshiped God. The Bible says, and with a loud voice glorified God. I said with a loud voice, hallelujah, he said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for making me whole. Thank you, Jesus, for the forgiveness of my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me, he said. Thank you, Jesus, for healing me. Thank you, Jesus, for a new life in you. Thank you, Jesus, for the joy restored. Jesus, you are my balm in Gilead. Jesus, you are my great physician. And without skipping a beat, Jesus chimed in with the refrain, get up, get up, my son. I hear your praise. I feel your sincerity. I receive your gratitude. Go on now, thy faith hath made thee whole. In other words, the cause of his sickness in the first place, which was sin, was forgiven. And when Jesus heals you, he makes a change in you to reconnect you to society, not only the physical, but the whole being. So he was healed from the cellular level, meaning, all known and unknown negative images, unhealthy belief, destructive 
active cellular memories and all physical issues related to his leprosy were found, opened, healed, and he was filled with light, life, and love of God. When Jesus said, thy faith hath made thee whole, it impacted every level of his life, meaning his finances were healed, his relationship was healed, his social life was healed, and he was healed for heaven. In verse 17, Jesus asked, were there not 10 cleansed, but we are the nine? The other nine were church goers. They didn't return to give thanks and worship God. Well, excuse me for a moment, but that's the problem with us. When we want financial relief, when we want a job, when we want healing, we come pleading with God for help. And God, in his mercy, hears our cries and answers us. But we suddenly become ungrateful to God. Can't even say, thank you, Lord. And when we come to church, we can't even open up our mouths and worship God and praise him for his kindness to us. Well, excuse me, folks, but if you have nothing to praise God for today, just move. Let me praise him because he has done so much for me. I have to praise him aloud. You can go ahead and talk about me with my loud praise. It really doesn't matter. There is a reason why the psalmist says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Enter into his courts with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. So these other 10 lepers were healed physically, but they were not whole. They were not saved, which means that whatever caused their sickness in the first place was not removed. And the possibility is that they will get sick again. I want you to know today that before your physical malady can be healed, Christ must bring relief to the mind and cleanse the soul from sin. You will find no relief until you come to the healer of the soul. The peace which he alone can impart will restore vigor to the mind and health to the body. I'm always amazed by the God we serve. God invites us today to come now, he says. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Now, do you recognize God in your situation today? Are you so caught up with your sickness and stress that you focus more on, on what the doctor says in so much that you don't even recognize God standing right by your side? Some of you are so stressed right now and at the breaking point because you're in a, a mental battle that you think you can't get out of and part of you want to give up because you're tired and frustrated. But you have to recognize that God is in the midst of your battle with health and that you cannot fight this challenge by yourself. You must make room for God. You must have an encounter with God. Because like that, like that one leper, you have a condition that only God can heal. James tells us, in chapter five of his book. If anyone among you is suffering, let him pray. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call upon the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the lepers of, and the prayers of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sin, he will be forgiven. 
Sometimes healing is not the only path that he has chosen for us. God is more interested in our soul salvation than our physical healing. Some of the greatest blessings in this world come from God's power in the midst of trials. God changes us, molds us, strengthens us, and builds us up through hardship. And there is nothing like the experience of being comforted by God alone in that dark hour of darkness. Ezekiel 6 and verse 6 says, when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine blood, I said unto thee, when thou wast in thine blood, live. Today I speak life. You shall live and not die. Don't give up the fight for your life. You shall live and not die. And I say, hallelujah. The spirit of God is among us today. And we thank God for his life giving presence. We rebuke sickness. We rebuke illness. We rebuke diseases, infirmity, infirmity and even death. Ye shall live and not die. But even, even if the doctor tells you, you are in the final stage, it doesn't matter what the doctor says. If you trust God, you shall live and not die. If you obey his word and walk by faith like those lepers. Today, you might be having some health challenges and all you can do is cry out to Jesus and say like the 10 lepers, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. Let me remind you today that he is the balm in Gilead and whatever the situation you are facing, Jesus is right here, right now, ready to make you whole, ready to save you, ready to snatch you from the jaws of Satan. You need to recognize the healing power of God, not only to heal you from your sickness, but for his sanctifying power to make you whole. Yes, you may have sinned and brought on the sickness in the first place, but the blood of Jesus is available to wash away your sins. The songwriter says, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Remember the confession of our sins is vital to the restoration of our health. What kind of man is this that can liberate the sinner from the curse of sin? You see, he's my Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. It takes faith to take God at his word, just like the lepers. I am talking about body healing faith, like the woman with the issue of blood. I'm talking about Naaman healing faith. I'm talking about life saving faith. I'm talking about relationship healing faith. I am talking about disease healing, restoring faith. If today you can't see a way out of your circumstances, you wanna ask God, for some of this faith to stand on his word. When others say it's impossible, faith say nothing is impossible with God. And even if you must sleep in the grave, we have this faith like Job, that though worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh, I will see God. If you have some issues that you need to trust God for today, remember, he's a mountain moving God. He's a promise. 
keeping God. You need to trust God. Jesus is speaking to somebody today. He is reminding you that nothing is impossible with those who put their trust in him. If you believe today that your help is on the way, your miracle is on the way, your healing is on the way, then you ought to praise God with me today. Don't worry about what others may say if you praise him. They don't know what God has delivered you from. If there is nothing you need to trust God for today, I want you, I'm sorry, if there's something you need to trust God for today, I want you to stand on the promise of God. We have the same God that has worked for his people in ages past. Today, Jesus stand by our side and as the trials and sickness come, so will the power. Today, if you want to be healed, if you have to come if you want to come to Jehovah Rapha, he wants to make you whole. The world is a crazy place. The world is a crazy place today. People are afraid to be around each other because of COVID. You don't want anyone to touch you. You don't want anyone to breathe on you. You are in isolation because you don't want to get infected. All of these things are happening today. People are scared to death. They wave at a distance at you. Everybody is afraid to be connected, but we have a God who is a curse breaker. We have a God who can do abundantly more that you may ask or think. Do you want to be made whole? All you need to do is trust Jesus. The songwriter say, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him o'er and all, Jesus, Jesus, Precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. And I like the verse that says, oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to trust him at his word. Just to clear, trust his cleansing blood. And in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing, cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. How I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace. Oh, for grace to trust him more. Today, if you would like to be healed from your maladies, not just your physical malady, but if you have a heart condition from which you'd like to be cleansed, I'd like us, like those 10 lepers, to cry out to Jesus. Cry out to Jesus by just raising your hand in the chat. Jesus is passing by and he hears you where you are. He's ready, willing, and able to cleanse you from your sins and to heal you from your physical malady. So today, if you hear the word of God, and if you like this one leper wants to turn around, praise God, give God your life. I'd like you to indicate that by dialing the number 646-400-5700. Again, it's 646 400 5720, and our tech will assist you. But I pray that God will hear your cry of faith today. I pray that you'll give God your heart 
and let him take full control of your physical well-being and of the condition of your heart. May God bless you. Sister Baker, please pray for those nine hands that go up. They're responding to your appeal. So just pray that um, they will get the victory. And those who want to see us after, can um, we will meet you in the prayer room. So you could say a prayer for them right now. Powerful mm -hmm. message. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Father in heaven, here we are again, like those 10 lepers. We are crying out to thee, dear Father. Jesus, have mercy upon us. In this chat today, you have seen the hands of those who are willing and ready, not only to ask for physical healing, but to ask for a heart healing. They're willing to give you your heart, their hearts. And so at this moment, I beg, Lord, that you look down upon them. Cleanse them from their sins. Deliver them from the situations of their lives. And I ask, Lord, that you will give them the solace that they need. Help them, Lord, to have the faith and believe like this one leper, that you will not only heal them physically, but you will heal them not only for this life, but for the life to come. So at this moment, God, shower down your presence, shower down your blessing, and cover them with the wings of your love and protect them and place them aside for eternity. So Father, thank you. And for those who are yet to give themselves to thee, cease not to worry their consciences until they have surrendered themselves to thee. And so Father, we are going to thank you because we believe in you. We believe, Lord, that you will deliver your children wherever they are at this moment. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. And thank you so much, Sister Baker, for bringing such a powerful message to us at this time. You know, so many people are hurting and I don't want to deliberate any further. I just want to remind the people that at 3.30, we have a uh, special featured program for you. And then we come right back at 5 p.m. for healing of leaky gut syndrome. All right, so at this time, we are going to close out with our closing song. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. And after the song, if you want additional prayer, maybe you're looking at us on Facebook and you want prayer, we're asking you to reach out to that number, 646-400-5720. As Brother Elder Hutchinson sings to us our closing song, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Can we have the words up on the screen, please? Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the said the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove the more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me, need the healing cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove the more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, 
Oh, for grace to trust him more. Yes, this sweet to trust in Jesus. Judge from sin and self to cease. Judge from Jesus, simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. I've proved the more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust thee. Precious Jesus, Savior and friend, and I know that thou art with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved the more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Thank you, Elder Hutchinson. At this time, we'll have our benediction by Sister Didi Dali. Okay, it is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Um, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much again for this wonderful Sabbath program. Thank you so much for our speaker. Thank you for her message and continue to be with us, dear God. Continue to help us to stay close to you, dear God, and to rely upon you and to continue to trust you in these times of uncertainty, dear God. Help us to continue to be grateful as that one leopard that returned, dear God, giving you praise and rejoicing. And help us not to be like the nine, dear God, that forget you when we have been healed, forget you when we have the things that we need and only come to you in our time of desperation, dear God. Help us to commune with you, dear God, and to want that deeper and closer relationship with you. Be with those on here that have consecrated their lives anew to you, dear God, that wants to walk closer to you. And just help us all, dear God, to continue to be that encouragement and to be that light that we need to be for those outside of our home and those inside of our homes, dear God. Help us to be that example and for us to, ju to just really truly be burdened with those that are lost, dear God. And it is not until we remove selfishness, dear God, that we are able to be concerned about others' salvation. So grant us your grace and your mercy and your protection throughout the week as we go on our um, our endeavors for the, the the remainder of the week, dear God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you and happy Sabbath, everyone. Put your whole hand in his hands, put your whole Yeah.
Amen. Happy Sabbath. Feel free to unmute yourself and wish everyone a happy Sabbath. Next Sabbath, we will be doing our big dime together. So plan on preparing your meals and sitting with us to enjoy Sabbath lunch together. Yes, and morning, it will also be our youth day. And it's also our youth day. Thanks for that reminder. Yes, yes. Thank you very much, Sister Baker, for such a powerful message. I was blessed. And I know God has been good to us. We hope to have you back again. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm blessed. I'm totally blessed, Pastor. Thank you Praise so the much. Lord. Thank you. It was nice to see Elder Baker, too. Yes. Um, yes. Oh, servant of the Lord. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Yes, sir. <laughs> Okay, happy Sabbath, everyone. Same to you. Happy Sabbath. Sister Melville, it was nice to see happy you. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Yeah, Sister Lori Spence. I think I saw Sister Spence. So we encourage you. You've yes, been sitting for a while. Happy Sabbath. You've been sitting for a while. We encourage you to um, get up, go take a walk. We know that other platforms are. Uh, uh, happening and you may want to join them but we ask that you take that few minutes to stretch your muscles get some water and to percolate on the message before you dive into eating again all right thank you guys see you see you at five see you at five at three we have something okay. at three thirty. I mean, everybody has to know oh. when to disconnect and plug back in, right? So at 3.30, we have that special feature and then we come back at five. So feel free to join us for all one or none. You know what your <laughs> body can take. And that's all I'm yes. going to say. And, uh, and Merlin, uh, brother, brother Lucas coming to talk about leaky gut and um, most, many of you know him. Yeah. It was through his help why this entire gospel medical missionary started here in Northeastern in 2008 when he came to Linden and we sat down and we met in Linden there with Dr. Davis and Dr. Grievous. So um, God has blessed him. He was the one who gave us the flu bomb, the flu, the, um, yes. the, the flu.